Tina, great to have you with us. Uh, you must be packing up after a fairly busy couple of days. Uh, what are your biggest takeaways from the Pope's visit so far? It's been an incredible journey, Dennis. I mean, all the way from Rome back in late March to here we are in Edmonton now just a few months later. Just meeting the thousands and thousands of people that have come here to find their own path of healing. I met a woman yesterday from Nunavut, and she told me that the moment that he apologized and said sorry, she said she felt all her anger and sadness leave her body, and those were her, her exact words. And she said she felt a sense of peace come over her, and I was very moved by those words because, you know, everybody's had their own different um, takeaway from this. I mean, many people aren't ready to forgive yet, but others are really embracing the fact that he did travel here in frail condition with his health and made an effort to truly offer his sincere uh, apologies and ask for forgiveness in such a way that has never been seen before. Really loved that interview with the, uh, the survivor from Nunavut. Um, you have a lot of close relationships with survivors of residential schools. What have you been hearing from them? Well, some aren't ready to forgive yet. You know, I think that it was quite shocking for many people, and we've certainly seen the, the outrage online with the presentation of the headdress by Grand Chief Lily Littlechild mm -hmm. to the Pope. But others are saying, you know what, it's time that we move forward. I think that was a grand gesture on behalf of Indigenous people here in Canada to say, like, let's make a, a new relationship happen. Let's make a new beginning. This is by no means the end. And I think that, you know, it's a real opportunity from what I've heard to really uh, start fresh and really begin healing in this country. Well, what are people saying should happen after this week? Well, what I've heard over and over and over again is the revoking of the doctrine of discovery. I think mm -hmm. that is something that is a huge problem for many people because really that's where this all began. I think that, um, you know, healing, the healing fund needs to be established. I mean, yes, they, they were supposed to have that $30 million fund available for residential school survivors to begin healing because of the trauma. But then we found out at a press conference in Italy that, in fact, the Catholic Church was asking their parishioners to donate towards that healing fund. But yet they spent over $350 million renovating their churches just last year. Mm -hmm. So now that they're actually finding the funds to come forward with that, why wasn't that done in the beginning? I mean, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission wrapped up years ago. Why is it taking this long for them to finally pay towards healing what was, in a sense, genocide towards our people? Well, Tina, huge thanks to you and the whole team in Edmonton as we now shift to our uh, colleagues in Quebec for our coverage. Uh, safe journey home for you. Thank you so much, Janice. Nice to see you.